Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, and we love Mondays here at the Hustle and Hooks household because it means that we have lots of things to pack, which means we sold lots of stuff. For those of you who are new to our channel, welcome. My name is Mel, and this is my selfie stick arm able husband, Adine. You're shaking my selfie stick. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, plenty, plenty, plenty of orders. I think a bit over 50 orders to ship out. Yep, so busy, busy day. We're going to uh, do our best to show you some of the highlights, some of the different categories. We're not gonna show you every single one just because there's so many. We also have a few uh, special thank yous for folks who bought some lighthouses. And we're gonna talk about uh, how the algorithm was tickled by us and how that paid off this weekend for us. Tickled. Tickled, tickled. Yeah. We tickled it. Uh, let's jump in with some highlights for this weekend sales. Let's go. I'm in our shipping department, aka the eBay room, aka a pile of treasure. And we started packing, I started packing yesterday because the sales were coming in hot and I just knew that Mondays can get hectic and crazy and we still wanted enough time today so that we can process and keep tickling the algorithm, as Adine said. I did want to cover a shipping tip that's probably more relevant to heavy posh sellers and that is using USPS uh, bubble mailers, which are flat rate for shipping. I have here a few different piles of clothing that sold. So first off, I want to say that I do love the printed poly mailers. I think they're cute. We bought some for a while and I really like shipping them. They're nice. They're fun. They're happy to look at, but they also cost more money, even more money than just the simple white ones that we use for small first class items on our eBay store. If you're a newer seller and you want to reduce your costs, a really easy way to do that is to use free shipping supplies that you can get from USPS. For all of the clothing and things that we sold on Posh, I used these flat rate bubble envelopes. Posh has a contract with USPS where it says right on their labels that no matter what they put it on, if it's priority, they will ship it. So shoe boxes, free. 12 by 12s, which fit a lot of the boot, free. These, free. Another flat rate box. This was really great for shipping some bulkier sweaters, free. You get the theme, right? It's free. You don't have to spend $20, $30 on bags that are really cute, but they may add some extra overhead to your business. With eBay, it's different. We do have just the plain white ones. They're cheaper than ones with print. We've never had anybody give us a review that says, yeah, it was great, but it came in a plain white mailer. Nobody cares. They care about getting the product that you sold them in the condition that you said it was. That's what they care about. Really, the packaging is nice and great and all. You can tuck a thank you note in if you want to. We never do. It's just business. We ship the item in the condition that we marketed it as. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for ways to cut costs, if you're looking for ways to increase your profit margin, that's a really easy one. If you're using those cute ones, maybe just try not using them for a little while and see what happens. What's in a number of these bags are torrid pieces. They have been selling fast. Once we get them, a lot of times they only last a day or so and then they're gone. And if they're not, then we have plenty of watchers on them and then they sell a few days later. A couple examples. Someone bought a bundle of two on eBay. Just simple, basic, you know, it's stretchy, comfy material. And I'll have to run the lint roller over it, obviously. Black is very popular color, but it's also kind of the most difficult to ship. And then another just plain t-shirt. Somebody bought both of those for $44, one shipping cost. And then on Posh, I made a deal with somebody who got three pairs of just comfy, stretchy pajama pants, three different prints. Uh, we made a deal for $55 for all of the pieces. Again, they're gonna pay shipping on that. And this was just listed yesterday and it sold within a few hours. It's the raglan sleeve, again, a super soft jersey, and that sold for 24 by itself. Uh, there's a number of other ones going out, but those are the ones that I don't have in packages, so I showed you those. 
If you missed our Torrid haul, we found, I don't even remember how many pieces it was anymore, uh, but we'd made a video of it. We walked into our local thrift store on a whim and a whole rack was just full of Torrid pieces and also some other plus size clothing, which we've also been selling really fast. Go take a look, check it out if you haven't. Torrid is a great brand to watch out for and we cover it in that video. Another thing that has been selling very fast are these Nordstrom gloves. Basic, leather, polyester lined on the inside. I list them and they sell. Uh, mostly on Facebook. I've sold one on Posh and four I believe on Facebook. They've only been listed a couple days. This is the time to sort of get that stuff up, that winter stuff, before it's actually snowing. These were just from liquidation. So happy with the profits. I'm selling them for $20 plus they pay shipping on top for each pair. I'm going to cover five different pairs of shoes that sold for us this weekend just to give you an idea of what's selling now and really what types of shoes you should be looking out for. Keep in mind that we pay an average of $7 per shoe in most of our thrift stores. There are some thrift stores that uh, charge a lot more so I'll show you that example first of at this one thrift store it was way too expensive but then I found basically the same thing in another one for really cheap. So if you run into those thrift stores that are marking up their stuff and you can't make a margin, don't be disappointed. Just wait for the next opportunity. Go to the next thrift store. Make a road trip out of it if you need to. The opportunity is out there, believe us. The first example are these Wolverines. Literally at a different thrift store, they wanted $79.99 used for the same pair of boots. So of course I said no, that doesn't make any sense for our business model. I went to Goodwill a few days later, $7.99 for the same exact boots. These sold super fast for $59 plus shipping on Facebook Marketplace. I mean, Wolverine is just a great, great brand to look out for. These were like new, maybe worn a few times. They do have the composite toe and they're made out of leather. Uh, great brand. If you are not familiar with, you can see that the logo or the branding is pretty straightforward. And they also have this little bear claw or Wolverine claw, I should say, on the side so you can identify them pretty quickly. These sold within a day. We don't often find leather Converse, but these ones uh, we did find in a larger size. These are men's size 12 or women's size 14. We do like to include in our titles um, that they are unisex or that both sizes are there just in case someone is shopping for them. The unfortunate part about eBay and Poshmark is that you do have to select a gender, but under item specifics, you can select that they're unisex uh, and move them out. Because sometimes, you know, you'll find a size that's a really small men's size. Well, then we will advertise it more towards the woman's size because that's a more average size, if that makes sense. So these are women's size 14. There are not a lot of women with size 14 shoes, so we emphasize that they're men's if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, these sold really fast for us again within two days. These sold for $45 with free shipping. Shoes typically, we, you know, cost about nine to $12, depends on where they're going. Super happy with them, obviously, because they sold so fast for such a great price. Asics, they, they have such a broad amount of different styles and variations of shoes. Most of them are geared towards running. These took a while, so with most Asics, we usually sell them around that $20 to $30 mark plus shipping on top. These sold for $25 on Facebook Marketplace. They did take a while to sell, but again, shoes are a volume game. So the more shoes you have in your inventory, the more you're obviously going to sell. Always make sure you're picky when you're getting running shoes. Make sure there's plenty of threads left, otherwise nobody wants them. Asics, great to flip. Some sell much better than others. These new in-box Merrells, um, they're the 168 AC Pros. I believe they're like a, a nursing shoe because we went to a garage sale a while ago and someone noticed I had them and they're like, oh, you must be a nurse. It's like, no, I got them at a thrift store. So I found a pair of size 15s for myself, which I kept. They're all brand new. Um, this thrift store got a huge donation of them and we bought all of them. This pair sold for $57. We did pay up for them. We paid $25 a pair. So not the greatest profit margin, but uh, anytime you see brand new in the box shoes, we're gonna pick them up and take a look, see if they're worth reselling. We sold another boxed pair. These are used, Specialized is a fantastic brand. Look out for Specialized um, helmets. Um, they have the S-Works like elite stuff that sells for a lot of money. These are relatively basic mountain biking shoes. Like new condition, we got these from our latest store buyout. Um, Speaking of buyouts, we did another massive buyout. That video will premiere Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m., so come and hang out. We spent a lot of money, but we got two carloads full, so 
stay tuned for that video and, and uh, come check it out. These ones sold for $35 plus shipping on Facebook Marketplace. And again, these sold within two days. With cycling shoes on Facebook Marketplace, we have 100% success rate and they always sell fast. We sold a few more lighthouses. I know a couple went to viewers, so thank you guys for buying those. All that money goes directly towards our kids' education fund. Let me pull those real quick and uh, say thank you for those who bought them. The first one went to Todd and his wife. This one actually sold uh, about a week ago, but we didn't know if it was a viewer or not until we got a message afterwards. Todd writes, Great Lighthouse FYI, this one's located in Outer Banks of North Carolina. My wife and I enjoy your YouTube channel and we're happy to donate to your worthy cause. Looking forward to more videos. Todd and uh, Todd's wife, uh, thank you guys so much for your support. It truly means a lot to us. This next one is uh, Society Exclusive Coney Island, New York. This one's going out to Doris. Doris writes, thanks guys. I love watching your channel. Doris, thank you so much. Again, truly appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for your purchase. The next two we did we don't have any notes for so we don't know if these are viewer sales or not so we're just gonna shoot in the dark and thank you anyways in case you are a viewer so the beaver trail went to a gentleman by the name of edward so edward if you're watching if you're a viewer thank you very much and then this top one is uh i don't know if i can pronounce this or not skit skit to wait skit to wait i have no idea i saw that too and i have no idea <laughs> skit to wait, Massachusetts. i think it's probably a native american Ah, that makes sense. Skit, skit to eight. Now uh, this one went to Elise in Florida. Again, Elise, if you're a viewer of ours, thank you so much for your uh, purchase. And if you're not a viewer of ours, you should uh, subscribe to our channel. Thanks, Elise. We already packed one more, the seven foot knoll for Maryland. That one went to Jane. Again, we don't know if Jane is a viewer or not. Uh, if you are, thank you so much, Jane. We truly do appreciate it. If you're not, you should subscribe to our channel. That's it for all the lighthouses. The nice part about the lighthouses is that they already have their foam in them, or most of them do, so we just have to put them in a 12 by 12 um, by 8 box. Like Melinda mentioned, those are free, so make sure you guys are getting your orders directly from USPS.com for free. We're not sponsored by the post office. Just take advantage of their boxes because they're free. I'm going to cover a few more sales just that were more unique or worth mentioning. This weekend, we didn't really have any huge banger sales. Our biggest sale was $130 and it was for some golf clubs that we picked up. Other than that, it was just very steady and consistent, mostly in anywhere from like the $38 to like $55 range. Again, nothing crazy, but those sales all added up to a really awesome weekend. We are gonna share our total number at the end, so if you're curious, stay tuned for that. One I will go over is uh, pots and pans, because this video just couldn't be complete if we didn't include one. Uh, nice skillet, you know. My theory that I've shared is that around fall, people start buying more cookware because it's getting into holiday season a lot more family get-togethers, a lot more cooking, a lot more nostalgia happening. So I, it's a theory that has not been tested uh, scientifically, so don't take this as fact, but I do notice an in uptick in people interested in cookware around this time of year. Uh, for example, we've sold two really large pots and some other random pots and pan sets that have been sitting in our store for a few months, not a crazy amount of time, but long enough. But again, saw that uptick in a bunch more sales related to cooking. So, coincidence? Maybe, possibly, maybe not. This one, um, this skillet sold for $63, will pay for shipping. This was a garage sale find this summer. We did pay up for it a little bit. We paid $15 for it. Uh, it's just a authentically vintage shake maker. They do make modern ones now. This is just cool because again, it just has that vintage style and it's authentic. So this sold for $50. Again, we're gonna pay shipping on that as well. It should fit in a free shoebox size box. This last one uh, is a La Machine, just the motor. We parted this out, we paid $7 for the whole unit. We're already in the profit. The motors tend to sit the longest because usually you're replacing the parts that have broken. 
uh, but it did finally sell for $30. It'll fit in a 12 by 12 by 8 free USPS box. So coming back to the consistent sales weekend, if you remember a week ago, we tested the algorithm and we just listed and listed and listed and listed. And we did have a lot of sales that weekend, but we had also sort of made the disclaimer that sometimes it does take a little while for it to kick in. I am very confident that this was part of that algorithm test. It was a week later, we had sort of pumped in a bunch of new inventory, and then we kept consistent during the week. It wasn't, you know, the 40, 50, whatever that we were putting up that one weekend, but we did maintain consistency. So those two things together, I think prove that yes, you do have to be consistent, but also pumping in more can lead to a mini influx at any given time. So that's our plan moving forward as well. We always try to list as much as possible, but we do stay consistent with listing the 30 items a day. And then of course, as quarter four goes on, we are going to strive to process a lot, have some big processing pushes so we can have some more of those really big listing weekends or days as well. We also broke a record this weekend of most sales. We had a thousand dollar sales day and we sold 29 items. So we did our thousand dollar sales day dance, which we do every time we hit that on Instagram. Feel free to follow us over there as well. And then 29 items is just, I mean, that's a lot. And we hope that continues. Our goal is to be making that a regular occurrence where we sell more than 29 items every day but it's a really great feeling when you're just hearing that cha-ching consistently all day. It's great. I did also wanna reiterate that we have been doing this for two years and we already have a solid store base to begin with. So this was, an, this was a great weekend. This is definitely something to aspire to if you're just starting out. You can definitely get there. It's not easy, but it's also not difficult. Uh, and what I mean by that is Anyone can do it, but you have to put in the time and put in the effort. So keep doing that, keep hustling, keep grinding, keep listing and sourcing good items. Hopefully this is just an inspiration to those who sell less than this to get to this point if that's what you're aiming for. And of course, we don't even sell the most on eBay or any platform, but we do look to people who sell more and that keeps us inspired to keep going. Wanted to show you this unit real quick, this Pioneer that sold over the weekend. We actually had two of them just like it and neither of them worked. We paid $20 a piece at an estate sale. Just wanted to show you how I'm going to pack it, which is pretty straightforward, uh, how we pack all of our big chunky electronics. And also wanted to remind you, just in case it doesn't work, doesn't mean it's not going to sell. So 20, we sold it for 79. It still leaves us about a 25 to $35 profit margin, depending on how, how much it's going to ship for. I'm assuming it's going to ship between 15 and $20 because it's going into the Midwest with UPS ground. That's a really common question that we get. How much uh, is something going to ship or you know what's the cheapest way to ship something is probably the better way to phrase that uh, we don't know until we actually pick it and package it we have no idea how much it's going to ship for we do have a free shipping video based off of our own data if you want to check it out just look through our videos but because we uh, offer free shipping we just select the service that's the cheapest that's usually how it goes with free shipping I'm not gonna pay seven dollars more to get it there a day faster just because you know why would I, right? So it depends. If you offer calculated shipping, it's going to be different than free shipping, so on and so forth. So the first thing I'm going to do is just bubble wrap it, obviously. We just buy our bubble wrap from American Bubble Boy and then um, get it once this way, once the other. It stinks right now because we don't have a great uh, place to do our packaging, so we do it on our floor. But that's okay. It is what it is. We'll wrap it the other way, find a box, and that's pretty much it. This is the same way we pack all of our bulk electronics and you know, even like this skillet that Mondo talked about, we're gonna do the same thing, just bubble wrap it, same thing for this. For this one, it's already protected in the box so we're just going to use some paper around it in the box and it'll be completely fine. So here's my uh, project, the Pioneer. So I bubble wrapped it. I use uh, cardboard boxes, egg boxes because I eat six eggs a day and I generate a lot of boxes. 
Also makes for really good padding. It's not my original idea. We took it from somebody else on social media. They're great and we've sold a lot of stuff and used hundreds of cartons and never had any complaints. The rest I'm just going to fill up with this white paper and uh, stuff the top. This is a Chewy box. Shout out Chewy for making great boxes. We get these from our neighbors. Nobody cares if it's in a Chewy box. They just care about this item in the middle. So there's the packing tip for this video. This is the first time we've ever sold a set of golf clubs and this is how we're going to ship them. Now remember USPS also makes boxes that are triangular for golf clubs and baseball bats but when we're selling a bunch of them they won't fit. So simply I'm just going to keep this flat. I'm going to bubble wrap the clubs and then I'm just going to fold this over like a burrito and obviously from the other side too. Tape up the bottoms and that'll be it. So don't be intimidated just because something is kind of awkward to ship. It's made out of metal, it doesn't need munch, and this is going to be, you know, a lot of corrugated uh, cardboard to keep them protected from snapping in half. And if they do snap in half, we do have insurance from all of these major carriers. I'll show you what it looks like once I'm done. So I got the golf clubs uh, bubble wrapped. I ended up bubble wrapping two at a time just so the heads don't get all banged up. Um, so now all I'm going to do is basically just, like I said, I'm gonna burrito roll them. So the trouble is that because they're a bubble wrap, they're a little bit uneven, but I really don't care what the box looks like at the end of the day because it's going to get beat up in shipping. So I'm just going to try to get this to hold here as I work my way down. I may, uh, I'll stuff some uh, paper in here as well just so that the, the shafts themselves don't get banged up. And then here, it obviously becomes a little bit easier. But I have a lot of cardboard going around it, so it should be fine. More tape. It's not going to look good, I'll tell you that much. But again, I don't care. And I'm sure the end user doesn't care. There's that. So the rest of it, uh, I'm just going to go through, keep twisting it and taping. I'm going to tape the ends, I'm going to put some cardboard at each end. And that's pretty much it, it's going to be pretty awkward. Uh, and then as far as measurements, I'm going to measure the longest and the widest part. So I'll measure here, and I'll measure here, and then obviously I'll measure length for my dimensions and we'll get it shipped. And voila, just like that, one perfectly... <laughs> One set of, we're going to cut that out, uh, one set of golf clubs. So there are the ends. I was able to kind of cut or score with the knife and then fold it over. So it actually came out uh, pretty good. I'll uh, follow up with you guys at the end what this one shipped for and then what the uh, Pioneer shipped for. So you can kind of see that shipping isn't all that crazy. Five quick sales I wanted to cover. First one is Mario Kart for the original Nintendo. This sold for $37 with free shipping. It'll ship first class. We got this from that store buyout we did last week. This little matchbox with the original box. Um, this is a uh, vintage for sure. Lesney, England made. Sold for $25 free shipping. It's going international and they paid upwards of $50 to get it shipped to wherever it's going. Paid about eight bucks for this in a huge lot of Matchbox, well into the profit so far. For $50 free shipping, this Samsung camera, this came from Linda's aunt. She uh, gave it to us with all those lighthouses. It sold for $50 with free shipping. It didn't have the charging cable, but it does come with the original box. I was able to charge it and test it and it works fine. For $28 shipped, this Dirt Devil part. Sold, it's just the top uh, unit, I think this is where the clean water goes in. Came off a unit that we paid $7 for and we have a couple more parts from it. And then lastly, some CDs sold. Uh, this whole stack sold for $19 with free shipping. These will go media mail. With these CDs, we have about 10 cents each into them. And uh, what we do, is we just bulk them by genre. This is like rock mostly, unless we have the same you know, a few of the same artists and at once, then we'll sell them by artists. But CDs do sell, they're not worth a lot of money. If you can get them super cheap, I would pick them up in bulk. Oops, otherwise I wouldn't bother with them unless they're really rare. We're done with packaging. This is what it looks like. This is our uh, little wall of packages and mm -hmm. our 
pile of stuff. So we'll sit down and let's talk about the numbers a bit. Come on in. That was a lot of packing. I actually started packing yesterday, Sunday, because I knew what was in store and I wanted us to have enough time for stuff. Yeah, so it's about, it's almost, what is it, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, something like that. I think it's around 2, we're done with lunch, we're done with packaging. We have roughly like 10 things up so far this morning. We started the day pretty early before Jessica woke up so we can keep tickling the algorithm. The, um, the next objective is to get this into the car and off to the post office and UPS. Mm -hmm. Wanted to give everyone a quick update on the spreadsheet for 2022. I did hire a professional to update the 2021 version and create a pro version. We're also creating a third version that we cannot disclose quite yet. Those will be all available mid to late December. Thank you for everyone that has purchased the copy and, and hopefully you guys are using it and finding it value added. Uh, we truly do appreciate it. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, link is in the description below. You can go and check it out. So as for the final numbers that we promised you, we sold the most this weekend. This is a record-breaking weekend, I believe. Yeah, we had a record-breaking record breaker. We had a record-breaking day and yes. a record-breaking weekend as well. Yes. Yeah, so we already said we had a thousand dollar sales day. It was one thousand ninety-five sales day with twenty-nine sales. Now over the whole weekend, we sold a total of two thousand two hundred and ten dollars. And that's awesome considering it's just the beginning of quarter four. Yeah, we did 18 sales on Friday, 29 Sunday, and the remainder of Monda's well, counting it right now. 12. 12 on Sunday, which yes. is pretty good. Uh, we were like, oh man, on Friday, like, oh, one more away from the record. And then Saturday was just crazy. Yeah, so, so that's um, 59 sales. Oh, that's a lot right. of math. I don't know. 12 plus 18. Okay, this is 20. 30. 30 plus 29. 59. Yeah, 59. That's a lot of sales. Yeah. Uh, happy. They're very happy. Thanks again for anyone that supports us. If you've purchased something, if you purchase something in the future, uh, let us know via message mm -hmm. so that we can thank you. Yes. Um, that's it, right? That's it. We hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope there was something in there that you hadn't thought about selling before. Hope it brought you value to your day. If not value, at least a smile. If it did, consider giving us the thumbs up and tell your friends to subscribe. Yeah, all your friends, all your relatives all too. Every single relative that you know, text them right now. And like, Subscribe to these people and watch them. Thank you. And take care. Were you looking at me funny? You were, I felt it. Was I? I don't know. Take care. Thanks.